All right. Welcome back to the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast. I'm your host, Andrew. This is my beautiful wife, Nona. And we have a, so I don't like the term special guest, but I'm going to say it this time because I can't think of anything better to say. We have a special guest, Dave, uh, Canine Reaper on Twitter. He is a uh, South African Batman. Oh, I kind of like that. Is <laughs> Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> African Batman. Yeah. For for those that don't know, for those that don't know, uh, South uh, Africa is essentially, um, fucked. <laughs> well, yeah, I I compare it to America's Wild West in like the eighteen hundreds, except oh yeah, there's a little yeah. bit of technology there. Every man for himself. Basically. No, I I, I would. Dumb it down to what's that movie? A million ways to die in the West. The mayor gets dragged off in the background, being chowed by the coyotes. That that is South Africa. That is definitely Jesus. South Africa. The, the stuff that he posts is is amazing. And so, you guys met on Twitter, is that correct? Yeah, it was a Twitter space that, for whatever reason, um, I can't think of his name now off the top of my head. He's a um, in the army. He's a tanker. Okay. Um, Anyways, he had a Twitter space and I joined it. I told you about this. I was, I just joined it to like. What uh, is a Twitter space? Please explain what that means. It's like an audio Zoom call, audio only. That's basically it. Like people. So you guys can verbally speak to each other rather than type out what you want to talk yeah. about. I'm just following yeah. barely. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine a phone call that everybody on Twitter can tune into. Okay. That's basically what it was. And you guys met, what, six months ago, a year ago? Uh, it was in this, this spring. Okay. I had to go outside out back because I was trying not to wake anybody up. <laughs> so enough, <laughs> enough about, enough about us and our bullshit. Um, why don't you actually introduce yourself yeah. to our audience? Kind of, you know, tell us what you actually do because I know very little. I know a lot, but I know very little at the same time. Like, I don't even know what I'm allowed to say. So go ahead. Okay. Okay. So, uh. I'll take South African Batman. You know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna get a patch made for my paint carrier that says Batman. But it's gonna be that the the autistic meme version where he's like all. Oh, um, <gasps> That's funny. I love that. Yeah, I'll take I'll take that. Yeah. So, uh, long story short, um, I don't actually know what it is or how to really uh, put it into the right perspective because everyone's got their own views on it. But essentially, uh, I'm just involved in community safety efforts in South Africa. Okay. Um, and what that entails is a whole long conglomeration of community-based uh, activities, whether it is uh, assisting with physical patrols, uh, providing some means of uh, security without actually calling it security because remember we're volunteers, you know, no one's getting paid for this or uh, anything like that. Um, and just trying to essentially at the end of the day, fix things and make it a bit better going forward. Uh, so yeah, I can't sit there and just watch the general decline and collapse and crumbling of yeah. society around us. Um, so, so that's, that's what it is. Uh, and, and very important for me just to point out that I'm obviously not alone in this. I, I, uh, I've got a very strong group of, of brothers and stuff that I rely on. Um, and, the uh, yeah, I just blessed to have the platform to show it. One of the things that I remember you being asked on the call was, why don't you just get the fuck out? Like, why don't you come to the U.S. or Australia mm -hmm. or anywhere? And your response, yeah. if I remember right, was, yeah. I don't want to give up on my home. Something along those uh -huh. lines. I, I get that quite a bit. And I see that lately. It's actually at a point where people, they, they immediately go uh, full bossies. Bossies is like you go crazy. And uh, they, they almost insist that, hey, dude, pack your shit and... and jump on a plane and get out of Dodge. I've got to kind of remind them that um, I can't easily do that. Believe it or not, I've had job offers in the US and things like that, which I've turned down. Um, what am I going to do when I get there? You know, I'm sure the US is amazing. If you guys are happy doing your thing, that's out of the world. Um, I love Africa, man. What a, I, I couldn't leave this place. Um, and besides, I've put in too much, too much effort here at, at the end of the day. Yeah, um, I... I mean, I kind of see it from both sides because in, in my mind, like if you have the means, why wouldn't you, you know, go move somewhere where you can be comfortable and not have to worry about the safety of your kids on a regular neighborhood road. Like there's, there's Purge nothing, 2 there, yeah, there's nothing comparable here in the U S unless you talk about like, like 
you know, like south side of Chicago, like, but that's already the slums or the ghetto or whatever. Like we, we don't have an equivalent. Like he's, he shared some videos that are wild. Like there's neighborhoods that are kind of like this, like newer houses, nice areas. And people will just straight up walk into somebody's house and fucking steal their shit in broad daylight. And nobody cares. Like it's caught on camera and nobody cares. And these are the guys that are trying to put them to justice. But what does that look like on the legal side for you? Like, is there any sort of law that you can enforce? Like what happens to these guys? Okay. So, um, we were not, I guess not saying the word, um, uh, we're, we're not law enforcement of any kind. So we are community members. I'm not uh, a law enforcement officer. I'm not military. I never served. I was never in law enforcement. We are just community members that are filling, uh, fulfilling a requirement at the end of the day. And that, that requirement uh, is that law enforcement is essentially failing us on the ground. Whether intentionally or not intentionally, doesn't matter at the end of the day. They're just not there. Uh, and we have to fill that gap one way or another, because if we as uh, civilians on the ground don't fulfill that gap, it's only going to get worse. Uh, I mean, if I were to show you some of the operations and things that happen where there's been massive successes, where community members have been the driving, not just the driving force behind that, but uh, the, the, the buffer between good and bad, um, if we weren't there, it would be a lot worse. We wouldn't actually be having this conversation right now. Let's put it that way, because there would be no, for example, there would be no copper cable. I wouldn't have electricity running to my house right now. Uh, if it wasn't for certain individuals out there that are doing, doing their bid. Um, to put into perspective though, it's not like there's hundreds of thousands of us swarming all over the place, trying to do our best. Right. We're, we're very, very, uh, outnumbered. We are very outgunned essentially, and it's got nothing to do with, we're trying to be heroes or anything like that. But there is a requirement for civilians on the ground to get involved at the end of the day. And the legalities around that, technically, there are none, if I may be so forward. So you you need a government that's operational in right. order to enforce rules, laws, regulations, whatever. We don't necessarily have that, which is why another reason why we are where we are. And uh, so, yeah, the, the legalities behind it is, look, obviously, you abide by South African law. We never step out of the... Uh, the boundaries of the law. So you don't take the law right. into your own hands. Um, we don't step out of the boundaries of the law and we we act within the, the means of the, the law. Uh, you don't stretch the law because I mean, the, the our law is pretty straightforward with a few things here and there. So we don't, we don't try our luck. Um, we don't stretch the law in any way, shape or form. And uh, with that being um, the police out of their own will come to you and be like, hey, can you help us? Wow. You jump into a police van and off you go and you help them. But can you imagine in the US, you're walking down the street and a cop stops next to you and he's like, hey, buddy, I need your help. Jump in the car. Let's go. I yeah. don't Never. see that happening in the US. So they, yeah. they try and do yeah. that kind of stuff in like movies and TV shows because it like adds some drama to it, but that would never happen in the like yeah. there's there's actually legally there's more harm that can come from that to the officer right. and to the civilian riding with them. Like if if that officer say pulls over the wrong person, they get into a gunfight, and now your uh, attaché essentially, you mm -hmm. know, is wounded, or worse, they open fire on the suspect. Like there's that whole fucking thing is gonna fall apart, and right. yeah, like there there are, and every state is different. A lot of times, even cities have different you know subsets of laws within their state and within the country. In some states, if somebody breaks into your house and steals your shit and you pull a gun on them, you're perfectly justified. But if they turn around and they're running out of your house, even if they have your shit in their hands and you oh, shoot yeah. them in the back, you were fucked. Yeah. There's some states and some areas where if you cause any harm to somebody on your property and she knows all about this selling insurance, you're still liable for what you did to them, even though they broke into your house. <laughs> it's just, okay. yeah. Yeah, they can turn around See, and sue we... you. Yeah, we, we can't we can't do that either. So you can't protect property here, but you can protect life. Yeah. Okay. Um so if a guy were to break into our property and, and jumps over the wall or whatever, I within my legal right and capacity, I kind of cannot engage that individual if he's just standing in my yard. Gotcha. Uh, if he starts shooting at me from in my yard, he's obviously gonna go down. That's a different story. Right. If he's just standing there and he's trying to break in and, and, and whatever, uh, it's obviously all situation and scenario based so 
if um, it, it depends, unfortunately, at the end of the day, but yeah, I can't, I can't shoot that guy running away. I can't shoot him if he grabs a TV and disappears, um, et cetera. But if, if life and limb is, is at stake, then, then yeah, by all means, he's, he's fair game. So, but, you know, so that's, so how does it work if, um, like you've, you've posted some stuff of them literally digging up the fucking city street. Um, like oh, yeah. what, what do you guys do? Do you just walk up and say, Hey, get out of there and they run away or. Oh no, you kick his ass. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fuck that guy. Um, <laughs> sorry, is this PG rated? I need no, to no, 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 it's not. No, we're a hundred percent explicit. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's okay, one of the okay, reasons yeah. why it's so hard to grow because you know, we, we actually mark yeah. our content appropriately. Yeah. Okay. So no, um, that, that was, uh, for, for the feds, my side of the world, they were listening. That was a joke. Really. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, no, you, you stop that guy. Uh, if, if you, uh, if you can actually pull up on a copper cable thief digging up the ground and you can pull up next to him, that's already a success because you're on that guy before he realizes Right. for that to happen. I've had that happen once in my entire, like 10, 15 years of doing this. So it's like, it's impossible. It's, I can tell you now, if anyone pulls up on them, it's because that person was probably high as a flipping kite and he had no idea that, right. that people were going to pull up on him or the team that did it had a brilliant plan and it worked and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, you, you stop him. That, that is infrastructure. That is government state infrastructure. Yeah. If he is caught doing that, you perform a citizen's arrest within your capabilities, if you're able to do so. Right. And then you notify the, the relevant authorities, i.e. law enforcement. Hey, come pick this dude up. But now, Yes, where it gets weird, we will find somebody and law enforcement will turn around to us and say, okay, but were those tools actually found on his person? I hear this. You know how big a spade is, obviously. I'm sure spades all over the world are the same yeah. fucking size. Yeah. They'll be like, okay, but how did he manage to fit that on his person? And you're like, come on, guys, do us a favor. Yeah. Okay. Um, apart from that, they'll then say, all right, cool, no problem. You can prove that those are not his tools. But how can you prove, <laughs> God, how can you prove that that cable in the ground is state property? Now you yeah. have to get the state guys out to come to the freaking cable and be like, oh, yeah, that's that's ours. He was digging it up. If they actually come out and do that, you've hit the jackpot. You've hit the jackpot. Then <laughs> they'll arrest the guy if you're lucky, okay? Now, nine times out of ten, and I don't want this to be a thing where they say, oh, but K9 is targeting... Um, individuals who are not from South Africa, but nine times out of 10, in my experience, the cable thieves that we come across are, are not South African uh, nationals. Well, not nine times, I'd say, 50, let's be honest, let's say 50-50. I don't want people to say I'm stretching things. So 50-50, okay, okay. Uh, not, not South African nationals. Now, if they were to pick up a non-South African national, chances are they're gonna drive the guy around the corner and they're gonna let him go. Why? Because what can they do? They've got no capacity. Uh, they got zero, zero capacity to do anything. And and as he was uh -huh. saying, like think think about if you witnessed a crime, right? Like any any lawsuit where you see somebody is getting away with something that you clearly know that they did, mm -hmm. but because the evidence is basically circumstantial and based on witness testimony, mm -hmm. and you can't really prove that that material without the the government coming out there and saying yeah that's ours so without mm -hmm. some sort of like marking on it without you know clear evidence that that person was actively doing that like they're gonna probably get off in the court anyways like you deterred them for a small amount of time it doesn't sound like they are deterred at all right right but they'll go I'm, right back to it yeah, as I'm saying, soon as they I'm saying get like dropped you off you take them off the street for a short period of time and then they're immediately back on the street doing the same thing within weeks months yeah. days whatever if they if they lock him up uh let's say they the guy gets locked up at 8 p.m at night they mm -hmm. release him the next morning on the next shift change i'm not saying it happens all the time but it happens mm -hmm. enough times that one can talk about it the success rate for successful uh infrastructure uh, takedowns and etc it's I haven't checked out the stats before, so I'll be honest with you guys. It's been a crazy uh, week, but the, the stats, um, and I can say it without even having to go look it up, is like non-existent. There, there's just no capacity. There's like no detectives. Obviously, there is detectives. But I mean, the guys are so overloaded and down on manpower, it's impossible. 
it's it's just it's not happening what would you say the ratio so, is currently of people like you who are not actually law enforcement versus actual law enforcement what would you say the ratio is not a lot unfortunately i know that it looks like a lot and there's a lot of organizations out there that say well we've got this many um members and uh, blah 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 at the end of the day you've got to also look at how many of those guys are actually active mm -hmm. so the ones that actually count and yes I, i'm all for eyes and ears on the ground and um getting involved and doing your thing any way that you can uh, but what actually helps is capable fit functional manpower right it doesn't help anyone if if sorry on the side of the road sees someone digging up cable theft and she reports it mm -hmm. because she's probably going to report it an hour later when she's done with the shopping like they usually tend to do which is why we try and tell people listen if you see something please say something tell us so we can respond immediately right you find that they don't do that so for me i'm not one of those that turns around and says yeah we need more eyes and ears we do believe me we do but we need them to please, for the love of everything that's freaking holy, turn around and say, hey, that dude's doing something he shouldn't be doing so that the appropriate response can be measured and, and uh, undertaken. Now, those who are doing the response, I would comfortably turn around and say out of 10,000, every 10,000 individuals of a population, you've probably got one or two people doing it. So it's, it's like the numbers are so minimal. It's not even funny. Do you think it's fair based? No ways. No ways. How can you? It's like. It's like our policing, for example, uh, I've just come off of essentially a 24 hour shift. I got a few hours of sleep in just before this. So I look a bit like shit. So you got to excuse me, but, um, hey, I, think, I think you tonight. look good Yeah. And, and people are going to be looking at this and they're going to be like, what are they talking about? I can't even see his face. <laughs> <laughs> for example, so it was two vans for a population of like, it must've been a hundred thousand something. I don't know, somewhere in that that region less, I don't know, I don't care at the end of the day. I just know that there's a shit ton of people living there and it is a, a, a um, township, we call them townships. Um, and in that entire township, you've got me, uh, my driver, my backup guy in, in the one vehicle and the next vehicle is the driver and the backup guy. That's five civilian volunteers. You've then got two, two, police officers in another vehicle and then four of these new uh they they call them um wardens so the wardens the crime wardens is a new initiative where instead of assisting the police by giving them physical police manpower better training and etc they came up with a thing where we'll give a guy three months of training and we'll call him a law enforcement officer of some kind and we're going to shove him on the road and good luck to him so that's wow. what those guys are and uh, they, they are unarmed in a lot of cases and uh, untrained so for example we assisted sap saps requested us to back them up on vehicle searches and things like that you cannot do it as a normal civilian you will get arrested uh, if saps comes out but if they request your assistance you can do it with them present um and you'll, it's funny because you'll watch the wardens and they'll like walk up to the vehicle and you can see they're looking at the vehicle and they don't know how to approach a vehicle. And I look at it and I think to myself, oh my God, if if if, if those occupants of that vehicle were to open fire, right. all those dudes in front of me are dead. Like they're just completely gone. Thanks for coming. Have a nice day. And uh, it's incredible to see them walk up and I mean, they need the job, you know, they need they need work. They need the money to take home their family. So they're, they're doing this. And I take my hats off to them. I respect them for it. But the government has failed them too because there's no training. There's nothing for them either. Right. So if you look at as a whole, for a whole friggin' huge section of, um, uh, I'll actually find it on Google Maps quickly just to give you guys a idea here. Um, while you're doing, nice while you're doing that, I did want to ask, what would you say the approximate, um, like square kilometer, square mile, if you can do the trans? I don't know if you use both or one or the other only. Um, but like, what would you say uh, that the areas that you cover and how many people typically are covering that same township or region or whatever with you? Man, that's a difficult one. Uh, it's, it's massive. I, I can't, unfortunately I can't put it into numbers, but so I'm going to show you like one image. Uh, let's make sure that I'm not showing anything personal here. So, um, this is probably going to be retarded looking, but okay. So this gives you an idea. This is a township called Kajiso. Okay. 
Uh, this wasn't the one that we did last night. This is, we've been here a lot of times. It's one of the areas that we go in to assist. And now I'm going to zoom in to give you guys an idea of just how dense and packed this is. Um, oh, wow. I mean, I mean, that's like millions and millions and millions yeah. and millions. Yeah, when you were zoomed out, that, that, that looked like um, like a fucking desert almost. I didn't realize there was yeah. this. <laughs> Because that brown tan, you know, color, it, yeah. it, looked it was all like, roofs. <laughs> yeah, it looked like what I would imagine, like Af the African desert would look like. But I know that's not how the entire continent is. But that's so that's now wild. We, we bolster and support uh, the relevant law enforcement authorities on their their jobs and their missions. They mandate you to assist within the requirements of of the law. I've got to keep adding the T's and C's in here. Um, and, and that's what it looks like, guys. It is, I'm going to look, I'm going to start making content very soon. We've got a website coming and uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, promoting it. I'm just saying, um, and no, I, we'll, I we'll plug it for you once, and, once it's out there. Oh, no, no, the link. Don't worry. I, I, I hope to try and make this more visual to show people just how, um, my tweets don't do it justice. They never, ever will, unfortunately, because yeah, the visual <laughs> idea of it, it's insane. Even now, I can't explain to you. He posted it's, a video. He posted a video. Um, I don't know. It's probably been months now, um, where these guys were digging up the road, and there's like I don't know, ten, twelve guys down in this fucking hole, and I didn't even know what was going on. Like I had to straight up ask him. I'm like, "What the fuck are they doing?" And it was all for copper cable. But I mean, like they were ten, twelve feet down in this hole, digging up buckets and shit, and the fucking road collapsed on these motherfuckers and killed them. Good. No, 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 that wasn't copper cable. That was Zama Zamas. What's a that? And this slab, it's called a slab. So what fell on them was a slab of rock that weighs a couple of tons. Uh, that's what fell on them. Damn. Those were Zama Zamas. Yeah. So what is what is a Zama Zama? So a Zama Zama um, and uh, another character, Joe Dolio, coined the, the term. Um, Sorry, I should ask you before putting names out there. I don't want you to think I'm plugging anyone. I'm just saying he coined the the, the term uh, artisanal miner is essentially what they are in the correct terminology. But what, what they actually are are illegal, heavily armed gold miners that come to South Africa uh, and they go through all the old mine shafts. Remember, South Africa has got some of the, the biggest uh, mine shaft infrastructure in the world. I mean, we were the gold capital at some stage. I mean, that's why this country was fought over, over and over again. So they go in, they process the, the old gold that they could find. They go down for months, weeks at a time underground, and um, they come to the surface and, and they sell it. They, they call the gold that they find, it's called Tutsi, uh, which means precious. It's what they're essentially um, looking for. But now to get them into perspective, you must understand that, and I'll show you now if I can just get another video for you guys. Yeah. Again, it's nice being visual. Um, they were heavily 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 armed you're talking ak's pkms they've been found with rpgs it's all like soviet wow. era um stuff are, are these people native it, or no you said they're foreigners never mind i was going to ask what their so, nationality nationality was so the, the zama zamas i will say are mostly um foreigners they tend to be from the mozambique uh swaziland zimbabwe botswana um blah blah, blah. So they use mining uh, explosives. We call it the forbidden sausage. The you forbidden sausage. Wow. Yeah. Anyone that searches Zama Zama on my Twitter will, will see it. Wow. That ties into cash and transfer device, by the way, but I'm sure we'll get there eventually. I'm just trying to find a video to show you guys, give you an idea of, of what these Zama Zamas actually um look like uh yeah we go this is fantastic there we go uh, let me just hit play on this stupid thing yes the music is required check the armament this this straight up like i mean if i didn't if i couldn't see their faces it looks like something like straight out of afghanistan or something like that like it doesn't it doesn't look like, like a, it would be in a, a civilized country. Uzi, there's a guy with an AK. There's another guy with a dash bronze. There's another one with like a modified R1 or something. Um, so that that is a Zama Zama. Now, 
you can tie Zamazamas in now with copper cable theft, by the way, because they are realizing that, hey, there's a lot more money to be made above ground. And that is a fuck up because now you've got guys like myself who are pulling up on scene to assist the local community. Yeah. And where before we were maybe facing one guy with a nine mil while his friends dig, you're now pulling up and it's like, holy shit, you've got um, Zama Zamas that are protecting them while they dig up the uh, copper cable. And it becomes a full blown firefight in some instances. So, what went from a normal random, I'm going to steal cable and try and get away with it, is now becoming uh, an actual threat to how communities are operating. And adding to that, let's not forget the Zamazamas have got military training in a lot of cases. They were ex military personnel from external countries. Right. So, they get their training. And they continue their, their training, by the way, when they get here. They've got camps, full camps above ground where they practice. So the easiest way i found to explain to someone what the whole nine yards about them is essentially picture ISIS with the same level of infrastructure, capabilities, and um, logistics networks, just minus the I'm going to put on a vest and go blow up something sort of vibe. That's essentially what they are. So uh, here's another image. This is what they use to process uh, their gold. They put the stuff into these gas canisters, empty gas canisters, yeah. and they roll it with mercury and things like that to extract the gold from, from the mixture. Wow. This is like, it's both extremely ghetto, but also highly sophisticated. Innovative like uh, is the a, correct term. Well, it's, it's like, yeah. it's like, you know, like a, a, Meth so, attic. There's like a camp. I just wish it would show a little bit better. Yeah. Um, it is a You can you can there, send all this stuff camp. to me uh, later, and I can I can put it yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, happily, happily. So there's like a camp, and that's why I say if people were to think of them as as terrorists, yeah, I mean it's what they are at the end of the day, right? Um, that that's that's what it is, and that's what civilians are now going up against. Can you imagine having a meal with your family and they're there? You know they're having full blown firefights in neighborhoods. Yeah. Um. We, we, at a certain time, like 6 p.m., they close up their houses and they won't leave their house because they know they're going to be running gunfights. And we're not talking like three or four gangbangers here. We're talking 100 at a time having full-blown shootouts. That's, like, I don't care how brave you are. That, for me, is I would run away as well. I mean, unless one of my guys needed me, um, no, no one wants that kind of heat. There's not a chance. Are, are people, like, do people want to raise families or are they really just so afraid of this that they're like, I don't even, I don't want my kids to, you know, grow up here. Cause there, you know, people will say that about our country. They're like, I don't, I don't want to bring a kid into this political nightmare, but it's, yeah. our situation is far different from your child walking outside to kick a soccer ball and being fucking gunned down by some idiot who wants to steal copper, completely different scenarios. That's, mm -hmm. I mean, let's be absolutely clear here, but do like, are, do people still want to uh, have families and raise kids and stuff there? Yeah, people, um, they absolutely do want to, and they are having uh, kids and, and raising families and things like that. And I encourage more people in South Africa, obviously, please um, procreate, you know, have kids if you can afford them, please, if you can afford them. Um, adding to that, there's another side of that coin where the government pays out grants per child with a kid if you are um, poor or, or whatever the case may be. So now you find that people are having kids because they want the grants. Gotcha. So the I mean, we have goes something from, similar, but go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it's essentially like a freaking breeding program if you really want to dumb it down. Um, and yeah, they will, they'll have kids. People will have kids. And uh, What's the payout well per done. child? Now, oh, man, I can't remember. It was like 200. No, must be more. I can't remember, unfortunately. Uh, but it's enough for them to want to continuously have kids in order to claim from the government and then on top of that they'll claim disability and then they will claim uh, their pension and then they will claim the uh, not working thingy there's there's a whole lot of lot of things it becomes a scam essentially with oh, wow. what they're doing to to the government and um there's a lot of that last here too. i checked yeah but last i checked uh, don't quote me on this could be mistaken but i'm sure it's close enough i'm sure they said uh, somewhere around 50 percent of the population is on some form of government social grant I don't know what, so, I wouldn't even know where to look for that. I mean, I can probably find that number, but I, it can't be that high. Yeah, I don't think it's 50% here. 
Yeah, and that's terrifying. Um, and then you throw in the fact that we've got like a 60% youth unemployment rate um, and like a 30 something or 40% unemployment rate for normal people. It's things, what, things get spicy in a hurry. What's the age um, at which somebody like a teenager can legally get a job? Whenever you want. I mean, hell, if you, if, if you want to work at, at the, at the age of, thank you. If you, if you want to work at the age of um, 10 years old and someone's going to pay you, I mean, I suppose, it's, look, I don't know the legalities around it, but I, I suppose as long as you're not uh, extorting them. Oh, it is 18. Okay. I've just been told by um, the Imajigi that it is 18 years old. So, okay. So if you're of the, uh, uh, sorry, if you're 18, uh, you can start, start working. You can vote from the age of 18 as well. So here it kind of varies. Sixteen. It's sixteen here. Well, every state is different because I did look into it. The youngest I think is typically fourteen, maybe thirteen. But that's with a work permit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we're it, dealing with this right now because my oldest just turned fourteen earlier this month, okay. and he wants to get a second or a summer job. Second job. <laughs> I meant to say a summer job, and nobody will hire him because he's fourteen and. That's just too young. Okay. Uh, it might also be 16 years of age on our side of the world. So, you know, don't, don't quote me on that. But, I mean, look, if, if a little kid wants to go along and get like a summer job or something, yeah, while he's in between um, school and things like that, I mean, that's, no one ever frowns on we, that. That's, that's the we have We have a lot of that. Like, if it's under the table, if you're going around and you're mowing people's lawn or, yeah. right. you know, things like yeah. that. And I mean, people that's are just normal. Paying, yeah. Yeah, as long as he's not... Uh, making t-shirts while wearing slip slops, starving to death in a factory somewhere. Oh yeah, he'll be fine. <laughs> so speaking of normal, it's around 4 p.m. on a Saturday, your time. So what would you consider to be a normal Saturday evening for you? Um, it's half past four now. Um, so a normal Saturday evening for me is patrols at, at the end of the day. Walk us uh, through it's it. what I do. Um, so earlier we, we said, uh, I had that short thing where I said, look, for me, what seems like the norm for someone else is not the norm. So uh, I'll start from the beginning, essentially. Uh, obviously I make sure that all my equipment is charged. Um, everything's ready, you double check your equipment. I always make notes on my phone. So if I use any equipment on the previous patrol, I make sure that it's replaced. Medical consumables and all sorts of things. Not a medical professional, uh, I'm a first aider. Um, and within legalities, you can assist within your means to a certain degree, obviously. Uh, just Do you guys have like good again. Samaritan law like we have here? No, no, no we, we don't as far as I understand. Um, yeah, so I get my kit ready. I, I don't carry a lot of kit out there. The, the thing is you, I know guys that will pack a whole bucky full of 5 million and 10 things uh, and never need a single item. I prefer to be, there's nothing wrong with that, but I prefer to be more packed toward what I know I will need mm -hmm. um, and, and things like that. So it's usually a jump bag with medical supplies. My plate carrier, on the plate carrier is everything else that I generally carry with me. Um, and, and maybe another bag full of like electronics, radios, power banks, universal cables, blah, blah, blah. And, and that is, yeah, that's essentially how it works. And then you start your patrol. That's pretty much it. Are you guys in vehicles that are like marked and easily identifiable or are this just your personally owned vehicles that you drive around in? So these are our personal vehicles. We, again, volunteer work, we're not uh, paid or, or receiving any monetary value for the services that we are, uh, are taking in. Um, the vehicles are marked. It's better to identify yourself Right. Uh, we put magnets on the side, so it's better to identify yourself to say, I'm from this community safety initiative. Um, it's, I also think it's the right thing to do because you don't want to be seen as cowboys. Right. Uh, you don't, you don't want to give people the, the wrong idea. Um, so yeah, we do mark ourselves and, and, uh, there's a lot of community safety initiatives out there that don't mark themselves. And it's unfortunate because they give the rest of us a, a bad name. Um, and they probably also end up in more firefights and more fucked up situations because people see, like, if somebody were to walk up right now 
and try to come into the house and tell and there's video of this happening here in the States over the last couple of months, just, you know, for whatever reason, people trying to break in. But if somebody tried to walk up to, to the front door right now and come into this house and they didn't have a badge and they were in an unmarked vehicle and they were telling me they were a cop, they're going to get fucking shot. Cause you're yeah. not a, you're not a cop. Yeah. You're not on duty. You're not identifying yourself properly. You're putting my family in, in at risk. You're not getting in this fucking house for one. And if you do, you're going to have a bad time, but I can so, understand that. Yeah. So yeah. I, do you guys have to, or do you, or do you like wear anything as well that identifies, or you said your kit, do you wear a vest yes. or anything like that? Yes. Yeah, so we do have high visibility vests that we, we wear when on, on patrol, okay. um, within reason as well. So if you're on an op and you're assisting a certain law enforcement unit and things like that. Sometimes it's wiser not to wear that. I mean, right. I'm not going to walk through Zama Zama territory with a glow in the dark, freaking high visibility vest. Right. I might as well stick a flare on my helmet. Um, and that, that, yeah. So within reason. So we had, I know a lot of people are going to, yeah. Uh, in the army. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm an army veteran, um, you know, back in the day, like world war two times. And I think even all the way up to Vietnam, uh, medics like myself would identify we'd either have something on our helmet or we wear a patch or mm -hmm. there'd be a an arm uh i can't remember what they're called it's like a little armband thing um you know to identify ourselves but in current wars and conflicts where we're not really fighting a government and their military we're fighting terrorists and things like that it's basically putting a target on yourself because you're you're, you're out there with an infantry unit or whatever and you're the only guy that has you know, any sort of uh, cross or anything like that on you, they're like, oh, if we take out the fucking medic, the rest of them are fucked. So yeah. we stopped doing that. Yeah. But yeah, I, I can I can completely understand. But yeah, if you're in a fucking neighborhood, you know, where you're patrolling for to, to help. And, and also it's the peace of mind for the people in your community to say, hey, I saw the mm -hmm. guys drive by a couple of times or they walked by. I don't know if you're ever on foot, but. Yeah, yeah. So we we call them high visibility patrols. Then you will uh, drive around the neighborhood with your vest on, magnets on the doors, etc. Again, within the requirements of the law, there's no real requirement for the law there, but it's the right thing to do. Um, and, and yeah, but again, I'm I'm not not a fuck. Am I going to walk through Zama Zama territory? Uh, and I mean, I can show you. It's just wide open spaces, all mine dumps and things like that. It's again, you might as well walk around with the flare in your freaking hand. Right. Um, and then you wonder why you're getting shot at. So no, in, in instances like that, I will not wear a high visibility vest. It's stupid. Um, not even the police identify themselves when they operate in those environments. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't either, <laughs> especially no the way that you've described these people. Do uh, you have your vehicle outfitted with like bullet, bulletproof glass or anything additional like that? No, no. These are just normal, everyday, everyday, soft skin civilian vehicles, buckies, cars, SUVs. Did you say buckies? Yeah. What is a bucky? Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. You see again. What's the norm for me? Is not the norm. Yeah, what's the bucky? Else. Oh, so, no, no. I was gonna, I was gonna wait until the end, but I was gonna ask you to give us some uh, slang and see if we can identify any of it. Yeah. So um, a bucky is for, for you guys. It would be you. You call them trucks, I think. Um. They're short wheel based. I'll show you now. Let me just open. Andrew this. drives a truck. I'm going to start calling it a Bucky <laughs> just to annoy him. Yeah, like a. a That's like a literally bus. Andrew's truck. Yeah. <laughs> not this. It's not Ford, but yeah. yeah. I drive a Chevy Colorado. <laughs> that is hilarious. Oh, yeah, yep. You, it, you officially you drive a Bucky. Ups, you no longer drive pickups, a truck. Well, the yeah, Australians they call them Utes. No, I like Bucky better. <laughs> you so can it's get B -A fucked. B A K K I E. It's a yep. bucky. You drive a bucky now. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> I'm gonna. I wonder if we can get that to. Yeah, we can probably get that to trend. With like, we got to start with the kids. That's where you always have to start. You have to get them to say it so their friends say it, and they annoy their parents with it, and then they okay. it keeps going. Yeah, we. We're so gonna, that's our at home initiative. Yeah, we're gonna bring that to the bucky. US. We're gonna give you. We're gonna. <laughs> that's what this we video. learned today from yeah. you. <laughs> No. So um, we definitely learned a lot more than that. Um, we went on one of my little tangents. We uh, Nona likes to call it the Tangent Express. Yes, I'm the master of completely going off course. Mm -hmm. um, 
I, you and I had kind of briefly talked over the last couple of months about, um, you know, you were talking about filming, filming more and putting something more professional mm-hmm. together. I'm assuming that's what's coming to the website. And you were also talking about podcast and I think a book as well. Oh, what, wow. all, what all you got yeah, tell going? Us everything. What, what, are you, what are you actually, like what's on the table now? So, what What's your long-term? So what's on the table right now is to get the website finished. And uh, the main reason I want to get the website finished sooner rather than later is it gives me an anchoring point to put everything else um, on there. The goal, the long-term goal, uh, is to try and normalize what South African civilians are experiencing on a daily basis for the international community. That, that is what I'm trying to achieve. Where once again, for me, what's normal, I wouldn't even think about some of the things I'm supposed to actually tell you today because it's like, okay, it's a Friday and I continue with my life. But for you, uh, it's like, holy shit, <laughs> you know, how are you still alive sort of thing? Um, so that is that is what I'm hoping uh, to achieve with it. It's, um, it's just gonna serve as a, a platform that's gonna be a little bit bigger than, than my Twitter account. Uh, Twitter is great. I love or X, whatever the hell people want to call it. It's fantastic. But I find that, excuse me, I find that things sort of get lost there amongst mm-hmm. the posting and, and whatever. Uh, you can go from like a professional, okay, he has this, blah, 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 to an instant shit post, and then everything else is lost in between. So a website is a great way to stick a podcast on there, a blog, get some videos up, and then people can actually go through it and they can take a look and be like, oh, wow, okay, that's actually quite rough. Um, Give me a nice anchoring point as well for storing information going going forward, uh, which which is the goal. Yeah, and there is eventually, <laughs> I don't know when, um, there will be a book one day. It's going to be called uh, No X Full um, because people keep asking me why don't you leave. So I figured, well, I'm going to explain exactly why I don't leave, right. what we're experiencing, and what we're doing. More importantly, what we're doing uh, to fix that. Right. Because you guys got kids. You would not want your kids to grow up in an environment like that. If there was a requirement for you to do this, I know that I'm pretty sure you guys would end up doing it to within a certain degree as far as you're comfortable. So it'd yeah, be her sending me out and saying, I want no part in this. Yeah, goodbye. <laughs> yeah, uh, goodbye. <laughs> I hope you make it home. Yeah. But if you don't, yeah, with, good luck. With, with your Bucky. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, with your Bucky. May the gods be with you. Mm-hmm. Do you <laughs> have children? May the be in your favor. Um, I, I you don't, you don't, you don't, yeah, yeah you don't gonna, have to I, answer. I was going to say, I don't want to ask family stuff because. I'll, I'll leave it as a yes or no, but I'll okay. take you when we're done. <laughs> okay. So um, I, the the one question I think that's probably going to be on everybody's mind is, since this is a volunteer initiative, how do you make money? Like, what do you, do you have or other means? are we not actually allowed to ask that? Because yeah, that would help sure. identify. So <laughs> you do have a job and you do this on your free time is what we're picking yeah. up. Luckily for me, my, my free time, what I do in those activities links to sort of how I make money as well. Gotcha. Um, I don't make money through any community safety work. Just, just, just be clear on that. We don't, we don't make a single cent. So all of our gear, every single piece of equipment that you can think of is publicly funded. Uh, all the fuel that we put in our vehicles is our own money, uh, insurance, rep, um, whatever you can think of, it's, it's all our uh, own money, but. I'm blessed again, as I say, to, to have the platform that's given me access to, you know, um, a, a lot of stuff. When, a when did your stuff. audience grow to the size of, cause you have over 50, 55,000 followers on Twitter, right? I think I'm on 60 something, 65,000 or something now. I'm not sure. Yeah, but, like how, um, when did that, was that overnight? Was that like one post or have you been on there for a long time? Really just grinding it out. I have like, 500 total <laughs> and i'm it, not on it, there at all <laughs> it, it gradually grew um over time so i haven't been on twitter for a long time believe it or not i think i've been there for like two years now or something uh the account i had before this was called the same thing and that account only started because of the july riots that we were having in south africa at the time in 2021 um and it was just a means because i mean i had access at the time to data because we, we were working with multiple joint operation centers to control the, the absolute sheer levels of wanton chaos and because i had access to that data i thought well i'm going to share it with the world and if it helps save a few lives which it did a lot of people came back to me and said hey man we got out of an area just in time when we came back the house was burnt down 
Oh, wow. you know, we didn't go that route, but some people went that route and they were shot dead or whatever. Um, so the original account was started for that purpose to share what was happening during that yeah. time. And when that, that, when that was done, I closed the account down and went on with my life. And I don't know why I started it up again. Um, and now I essentially am where I am today. This whole persona, if you want to call it that of canine and community safety on Twitter is a relatively new thing. I've only been sort of showing it off for a year now. Uh, but it's what I've been doing for the, for many, 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 many years. And I just found that, well, the international community is interested in it and what's happening. Why not show them? Yeah. And then I realized, but I can use it as a platform to get the gear that me and the team need in order to achieve our goals. Um, not money. It's never financial, uh, things like that. It's always hard physical equipment and, uh, yeah. So now I just sort of continue on with it and every now and then someone will pop me a message hey dude what do you need and i'll tell them and if they can they can if they can't they can't um and yeah the you know, long-term goal is to get that uh, website up and running get some content made um don't even know where to bloody start but we'll get there with the content side of things and the book and etc and hopefully normalize to the rest of the world so they can see what's happening here one of the things that i found speaking of the content stuff is you know if you just if you start your audience will lead you more to what they want you know they're either going to ask for yeah. it explicitly or you're going to see it in the analytics you're going to say oh mm -hmm. we when we post about you know news and stuff like that people don't really care but when we're when we post these videos of these violent crimes and stuff like that people really watch that and they want to know what the backstory is and stuff like that so yeah i would i would just say once you get it launched um coming from a web developer by trade um you know just shot oh, you're a web developer yeah yeah and you work with WordPress? Yep. Okay, I'm going to talk to you when we're done. <laughs> Sorry yeah. for you. I'm going to talk to you when we're done. We're no, yeah, no, done. that's fine. Um, but yeah, I, I would just say, you know, put everything out there. That's, that's, people try and go through all these strategic plans and stuff and they try and say, mm -hmm. I need to do this and I need to do this and I have to stick see, to that, it. That is my mistake. It's funny that you say that because mine was always, I mean, I've been trying for a year to make my own content, believe it or not. And I will spend a day making something and then I'll delete it. I won't post it. Yeah. And it happens over and over and over again. And I'll tell people I'm busy with this, that, blah, 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 which I am. Um, and it gets done. But then I just never post it because I'm like, oh, fuck, people aren't going to want to see that. Yeah. And then I will post something for whatever reason that I did. And you'll get like a million and, and more uh, views and interactions and whatever. And you could sort of realize, again, What's the norm for me is not the norm for them. And people really want to see this stuff. Right. Yeah. I'm going to start off small and just make tons of tiny little videos and see where it goes in that regard. And the, the other thing too, about websites and things like that is a lot of the content and you already kind of explained this the other way with Twitter, with stuff just getting buried. Like there's, you know, the algorithm controls a lot of that stuff like that. People mm -hmm. aren't, people aren't going to Twitter to search for that. I mean, they might sometimes, but like they're going to your account to see like what you posted recently. They're not going to scroll back, and it's not it's not easy to unless you know exactly what you're looking for or what to search for. Like if you told me to go look on your profile for a Bucky, I'd be typing the word truck, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to find it. But when you have that on a website or other places, and even I mean as long as your profile is public, you know, and, and indexable on on Google. Um, it's easier to find because there's a uh, there's a level of like not even translation but like interpretation where Google will say I think this is what you mean like you're looking for this guy and you're looking for this content you didn't use the right word but you'll still kind of come across that content and you'll be able to figure it out and with a website you have more of that evergreen quality where it's always there and it's yeah. always gonna not always turn up but eventually it'll turn up you know, and there's a lot more that goes into it. I'm kind of mansplaining it with looking at my wife over here. Um, but yeah, it's there that you need, you need multiple tools to do one job. I mean, that's right. with anything. Right. I use so my social media goal. to troll people and that, that brings me business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that is the goal. Long, long term goal. Get the, the website up. Um, I'm going to talk to you about that though. So yeah, absolutely. may the gods be with you because I'm going to harass the living hell out of you um, to try and get this done. 
All right, Andrew, do you have any final questions for him? I think he needs to get ready to go on his patrol. Yeah, well, like I said a little bit ago, um, I, so Ozzy Man, if you follow him, comedian, funny yeah. guy, yeah, he does a thing where when he interviews um, celebrities, he'll have them try and uh, you know identify or, or interpret like Australian slang. So I want to see okay. if you had anything that we cool. might be able to... Besides Bucky, since you already yeah. told us yeah. what that is. Okay, so... Uh, slang in South Africa, uh, patkos. What is that again? Patkos. P-A-D-K-O-S. Patkos. Uh, I wouldn't, I don't even know where to start, honestly. Um, is it, it's not food, right? No. You're, the way you're looking at me, you're uh, food? How, how much help do you want here? Give uh, us, give us like a genre to narrow it down. I, I would call it food, but there's a specific part of it that you need to add in. Otherwise, it's just food. But of course. Is it street food? No. <laughs> um, is it, it's going to be it, like balls or something. <laughs> is it? Is it food <laughs> in the like traditional sense? Balls. Like, am I going to go to the restaurant and order it? Or is this something really... Like, yeah, like okay, literally so, eating. Okay, tell us what it is. So, patkos is food for the road. It's it's a terminology that Afrikaners use. So, it's like you, you go and buy a bunch of snacks and you okay. chuck them in your bucket and you just chew on them as you cruise along. Ah. It's food for the road. Um, another South African favorite would be Blixum. Blixum? Mm-hmm. B-L-I-K-S-E-M, depending on who you ask. Look sounds like when it, you ambush somebody. It, it sound, well, it sounds like um, when people say they're going to smoke weed here. Oh. Okay, that's interesting. It didn't even cross my mind. All right, give it, narrow it down for us. Okay, narrow it down, we'll tell you what it is. <laughs> uh, okay, go ahead and just tell it. Down. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I can narrow that down. So, so Blixum, it's it's a South African terminology, uh, that blixum hit me or something. So it is uh, a person or a reference to a person. Um... Oh, Dan, that's actually a good question, guys. You see, now you've got me. So it is a, a reference to a person who has done something uh, that's sort of agitated you in a way. Or if you hurt yourself, so like you cut your finger and you go, ah, oh, blixum, that was sore. Uh, we'd say like son of a um, bitch or oh, shit. fucker. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it literally like you could you could use the terminology shit. Um, okay. Another South African favorite is foot sack. Foot sack. Yeah, V O E T S E K. Foot sack. He heard, he heard foot as an F O O T, <laughs> like ball sack, but foot sack. Give it give it to us in a sentence. Yeah. Um. Uh, so if someone were to, you know what, actually. Actually, a story I've got of a friend whose house was broken into, and before he opened fire on them, uh, he yelled for Zach. Uh, so is it like a warning? Like, I'm about to fuck you up? It could be seen that way, yeah, in a way. Hmm. Or is it like uh, like a, like praising your your deity, like, give me, give me strength? <laughs> Not even close. No, no. no. So futsak is uh, just to tell someone to go away, essentially, but not in a kind way. It's like you're telling them to fuck off, ah. basically. It's a South African favorite. Uh, another one would be a murme chesuch. Man, I don't See, even... <laughs> I can't even begin to start. <laughs> See, I was, I was thinking that this was going to be more like, you know, like English words, but that were just... No, no, yeah. no. South Africa's got, what? 11, 12 uh, 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 official languages. So wow. a murme is uh, someone who's got a face that you want to hit. <laughs> <laughs> you look in, punchable. In Afrikaans, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. In Afrikaans, it sounds a lot better. Like, this is the way they get their terminologies out. A murme So that guy's got a... a, a, a in, in pure English, if you were to try and translate directly, he's got a... a, a a hit me face. So a has anybody ever said it to you? No. 
No, Good. Like <laughs> Not to his face or like I don't want to fuck Right, right. Like Not to your face. <laughs> um, That's funny. All right, tell us one last be, one. Yeah, we'll give you one more in a different language. So, Chisanyama. Say it in a sentence. Fuck, fuck your mom. That's what it <laughs> sounds like to me. I, I'm going to go with the guys and uh, we're going to go eat some Chisanyama. Uh, delicious food. Wings. Pizza. It, it, it can tie into Onsgan Nobrai. I mean, I'm like <laughs> looking at your faces. <laughs> okay, so because um, I know you guys are busy, I'll get to the point. So, chisan yama is like a uh, uh, it's a meat that is prepared in a certain way on the fire. Okay. Um, it's it's how can I say this without people going canines are racist? But look, it's. It's a way that black people prepare their, their meat in South Africa. It's delicious. It's freaking amazing. It's we just, have, a, it's just how they, they say it. We have stereotypical stuff that people, on, like, if you're saying it in a derogatory way, people would oh, call yeah. it. But, like, there are very stereotypical things when you talk about an inner city barbecue versus what I would consider a barbecue. Like a cookout yeah. at somebody's house in the ghetto is yeah. very different from the cookout so, that I'm going to have here. So it's a, it's a Zulu word that literally means to burn meat. Okay. But I mean, the meat that you're getting, I promise you, it's, it's, um, it's, it's flipping awesome. If you get the right place to make it, um, it's fantastic. I, I would eat it without a, without a problem. What, um, what would you say it's comparable to? Like, what is just anything that might be. And not sheep balls, I, I'm I, assuming. <laughs> I, I would be able, or happily, I could actually comfortably compare it to the American barbecue. Okay. But not typical barbecue. I'm talking um, Henry Bob sitting in the Florida Everglades, busy like barbecuing up half a cow. It's on, over a flame, a correct? That's, that's roasting over a flame. Right. That's what I would compare it to. Gotcha. Interesting. Sounds I'm like, sweaty. So, like, th- this whole thing, like the conversation that we had um, a couple months ago, I, do you remember when that that um, Twitter, whatever you want to call it? You was, changed the trajectory of his life, and he has forever spoken of you in high regard so since I, then. I, I, I joined in. My I, was a, I, <laughs> I joined in. I hear about you all the time, and I had no idea who you were That's until today. <laughs> but I, I joined into the thing, and I'm just like, I was just up late. You know, it was like, it was like midnight or 1 a.m. or something like that here. And I just joined in because I was interested. And then uh, when he like invited me to talk, I was like, I don't know who any of you guys are. And I, I started introducing myself and he cut me off because it looked like I was speaking for him. And he was like, this is my call, not yours or whatever. And I was like, oh, dude, like that's not what I was trying to do. I was just trying to say, I don't know who any of you are. This is who I am. <laughs> and he was like, oh, okay, cool. But. Um, oh, that was that other guy's space. I actually remember yeah. that. That wasn't me. That was, um, oh man. Yeah. But I don't know who you're talking about. I don't know who you're talking about. Yeah. But that, yeah, that, that whole, that conversation was like the, a lot of the guys, he had you on there. He had a guy from Australia was in it. Um, and a couple other places. And even, even, and Murphy said this actually, when him and I are talking, he's talking about trying to move to the U S now from Australia. He's he like, is? Yeah. He's like, it's why because it's just kind of turning to shit there. He's like, our government's kind of, but nothing like this. No, but I mean, that could be potentially in their future. Who knows? I don't know. Well, maybe he needs to talk to canine here and set up a whole patrol to prevent it from happening. I I think Australia's already lost, to be honest with you. Oh, no. the political aspirations and, and the laws and stuff and what's happening. I, I see this is exactly why I don't want to leave Africa. We've got no government oversight here. We've got nothing. Absolutely nothing. I, I like it, yeah. I'd rather shoot my way down the road to get bread and milk and shoot my way back um, than have to go live under some oppressive regime. Like, yeah. screw that. And the idea of having to carry to go to the grocery store is just... I, I, I mean, cannot we, we even imagine... Here. We do here. Oh yeah, like, like it's all not day as and necessary. Night. Why? Why? Why wouldn't you? I mean, it's it's. I choose life. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, as long as it takes to get a license for that damn thing, but I, I choose life. Yeah, I like I like to have the blood inside my body, and that's <laughs> that's how it goes. That's where it belongs. 
<laughs> That's where it belongs. As, uh, as Ben Stiller said, nobody makes me bleed my own blood. Well, man. Uh, uh, that was, go ahead. Yeah, okay. <laughs> No, no, it wasn't that. Uh, was that Tropic Thunder by any chance? I think it was Dodgeball. I missed that one. Oh yeah, it was Dodgeball. Then yeah, it? yeah. So the amount uh, of movie quotes that I hear from this man, <laughs> it's exhausting. There, there are some movies like from the early two thousands that I could literally quote verbatim. Yeah, I could, yes. I could go scene by scene, and I, I could probably take all mm-hmm. the actors' roles. <laughs> well, I'm so sorry for your loss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for my brain cells, for sure. Um, so where can everybody find you? Just, just on, just on Twitter X. Yeah. They can go look me up on, on Twitter X. Um, I'm sure you'll pop my, my tag up there. Yeah. They're more than welcome to, I do engage quite a bit on my DMS. If I miss a notification, I do try and get to the messages that will send. So, yeah. Yeah. I can say he, even, even a little lowly person that has like 490 followers, he, he talks to me. So, <laughs> You know exactly how many followers you have? I actually just looked last night because all of a sudden I got like 10 randomly out of nowhere and I was trying to figure out who and why and what. And so I looked, so yeah, I was like 490. I'm not monetizing The amount yet. of followers does not matter. That's true, yeah. Well, man, uh, appreciate having you on. And uh, like I said, I'll uh, make sure you get to preview this before just in case you're like, oh shit, I shouldn't have. And we are blurring his face out? Yeah. Okay. Just yeah. I'm just making sure. We can't. We He's already been doxxed. We can't literally. <laughs> <laughs> just making sure. We would be so you, much worse. You don't have to, you don't have to worry about the preview. It's, I'm not too concerned about that. We haven't, uh, we haven't done anything spicy. So yeah, All right. you do your thing. So well, so. Next, oh God. Next time we'll do spicy. Yeah. Now I, now I didn't need <laughs> to know what spicy would be. <laughs> well, cool, man. Well, thanks for coming yes, on. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to end the recording me. and we'll, we'll stay on here for just a second. But thank you. Bye everyone.